This is question six from paper three two from the June 2020 exams from Cambridge International. Up the top right of the screen, you'll find a playlist that'll bring you to all my solutions for this paper. And in the description below, you'll find a link to an image of this question, so you can try it before looking at my solution. In this question, they give us the equation and they show us what it looks like, an image of this curve. And they tell us there's a point M, it's the maximum, the local maximum here. And um, well, this one and this shade in region is for part B, so we'll just stick with part A at the moment. They want us to find the X coordinate of M. Basically, they want us to find this number here, X. And uh, let's see, do they give us any more information? No, just find it to the cor uh, correct the three decimal places. So we see maximum, what should we be thinking? dy dx. dy dx equals zero, in fact. Um, let's, uh, yeah, let me just write equals zero. Now, how do we differentiate a function like this? We can use the product rule or the quotient rule. We use the product rule by, um, I'm not gonna do it, but by taking the bottom row and putting it to the power of minus one and multiplying by it, that's actually how I usually do it. But for the most part, I, I usually show students how to use the quotient rule, because they seem to like it a little bit better. So uh, we take the top row, put it as u, bottom row as v, and then uh, we use the, the formula. Let, let me remind myself of it. Yes, okay, it's uh, v, uh, multiplied by the derivative of u and minus, I believe, yes, uh, minus u multiplied by the derivative of v all over v squared. So remember, u is the top row, v is the bottom row. So let's uh, do this. Uh, v is 1 plus 3x to the power of 4 multiplied by the top row, um, the derivative of the top row, which is 1. So that's done. Uh, minus u, the top row, multiplied by the derivative of the bottom row. Uh, the derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of 3x to the power of 4 is 12x to the power of 3. And the bottom row is 1 plus 3x to the power of 4 to the power of 2. Now remember, this is all equal to 0, which is brilliant, because I can just multiply this by both sides. Uh, multiply this by the left, it's gone. Multiply on the right, well, it's still equal to zero. Zero times something is still zero. So we're left with just this. Uh, let's clean this up a little bit. Uh, let's go one plus three x to the power of four is equal to, if we bring this over the other side, it changes to a plus, uh, is equal to 12 x to the power of four. Um, let's get the x to the powers of 4 the same side. Uh, let's see, 12 minus 3 is 9, x to the power of 4 is equal, 1 will be left on the other side. x to the power of 4 is equal 1 over 9. x um, is equal to plus or minus 1 over 9 to the power of 1 fourth. If it's an even number, remember we get a plus or minus, but, but, I can rub out the minus. Have a think why, pause if you need to, um, and then I'll tell you now. And the reason I can get rid of the minus is the picture. The picture tells me it's a plus. I can see it's in, the, in, it's in a positive x. Uh, if, true, if we were to put this equation in, I, I, I haven't done it actually, but I assume it looks something like uh, that. It mirrors on the other side. So we would get a, a minus one over here. Or maybe it looks like uh, this. Either way, I assume we get a minus um, a minus value over the x side. Uh, let's see. Would it be? It would. It would look like my first drawing down because uh, there, uh, y would turn into a minus. Anyway, let's see. This is our answer. Uh, do they want the exact number? No, three uh, decimal places. So we put that into a calculator and. I believe we get 0 0.577. And that is the answer to part A. They don't need us to get Y. Keep an eye out though. Sometimes they'll ask for the coordinates of M. That just means we have to put this into M for X and find what Y is. Don't, uh, don't miss out on little things like that. All right, I will rub this out and we'll do part B. What do I still need? Uh, I'll keep this equation and the picture. So in part B, they tell us to use the substitution u is equal to the square root of 3 times x squared to find the shaded region here. 
Now, what they're also asking you to do is, how do you get the shaded region? They want you to know that we need to integrate. Uh, integrate x over 1 plus 3x to the power of 4, all the way between 0 and 1. They want us to... Um, yeah, they want us to know this part. Of, oh, sorry, uh, d dx. And that's what they're giving us a clue how to integrate this because this is not an easy integral. The clue is to put u is equal to three uh, square root of three x squared. So let's uh, do that up here. We'll write it again. U is equal to square root of three x squared. Now the other thing we need then is to replace dx. So we do that by differentiating the u. This is standard when we do substitution. We substitute u, differentiate it, so we can find what du is. And the derivative of this is two square root of three x. That means that dx, I guess, is equal to one over two square root of three um, x du. So all that tells us, let's put this in as i. So that tells us that i can be rewritten Rewrit, rewrote, rewrote. Um, this can be rewrote as the integral of uh, x. I'll have to leave that where it is. Plus, well, I could change it with something, but no, it's not going to help here. Plus one, uh, plus three, and uh, let's see. Oh, three will be replaced. Three x to the power of four. That's just the same as u squared. U squared is three x to the power of four. That's why they wanted us to replace it. So this is just u squared. And then we replace dx with du divided by two square root three x. And here's what we need. We need that x to cancel. That was good. It was a good substitution. They picked it, but it was a good substitution. Sometimes you'll be asked to pick these sort of substitutions. Um, so that has worked out. That, this is a hard integral. I cannot do that. This one though, let's get the two square root three outside. 1 over 2 square root of 3, um, 1 over, I'm just going to switch this, you'll see why in a moment, u squared plus 1 du. This looks hard, but this is actually an easy integral, because we're given it as a formula. Um, let me just double check, yes, we are given the formula, let me write it out up here, um, let's see, that the integral of 1 over x squared plus a squared dx is equal to 1 over a, the inverse tangent of x over a. We have a few, um, a few formulas given to us for integrals, some standard ones that we see. And this is one of the ones given to us. And what, what we need to do in this question is notice that this question, or maybe even notice that this here, is this similar, very similar to this. It doesn't seem it. Remember, x is u in this case. 1. 1 is just a number squared. It's just 1 squared. So I can just straight away... Oh, uh, one more thing before I continue. I haven't wrote in any limits. Uh, that's because I've changed it to u. These are going to be different limits than 0 and 1. Or at the end, I'll change it back to zero. I'll change it back to x, and we can just go ahead and use these limits. Um, actually, you know what? No, let me let me change them now, uh, just because some stu some students might rather that. If if x is zero, x is zero, then u is zero. So let's put in zero here. If x is one, one, u is square root of three. Square root of three. Uh, square root of three and zero. So I'll go ahead and use these limits then, and that way we don't have to change back to x. All right, let's continue this here. Uh, we'll say i again, just to make that clear. i is equal to 1 over 2 square root of 3, and this integral then becomes this here. 1 over the constant squared, which is 1, 1 over 1, doesn't matter. We just get inverse tangent of x over a, or the, the thing we're integrating divided by the constant. The thing we're integrating is u divided by the constant is 1, or the square root of this constant. So, so we're just left with this, and that's evaluated between 0 and square root of 3. Uh, this is equal to 1 over 2 square root of 3 
a tangent, uh, the inverse tangent of square root of three, and then minus, um, minus, well, let me write it all in, minus one over two square root of three, the inverse tangent of zero. Now that, that becomes zero. This all goes to zero. So we're just left with this. Uh, the inverse tangent of the square root of three, uh, let me double check my notes, is equal to pi over three. Uh, pi over 3 or 60 degrees, uh, so that's 1 over 2 square root 3 multiplied by pi over 3. Let's clean this up. This is equal to 1 over 6 square root of 3. Oh, sorry, pi. Pi over 6 square root of 3. That's our final answer, or uh, I think uh, the answer given in the book is is equal to, well, let's uh, multiply top and bottom by the square root of three. Uh, top multiplied by square root of three is square root of three pi, bottom multiplied by square root of three. Square root of three and square root of three become three. Three times six is 80. These are the same numbers. These two numbers are identical. Uh, I guess the exam would rather not have square roots on the bottom row is probably why they changed that there. Either either are fine, they will give you full marks for both. Although the exam would just rather that. Alright, uh, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. If you like this, if you're still watching, like, subscribe, share with other people who might be having trouble in these exams. Thanks for watching and have a great day.